uh, good afternoon uh, last up to now we have uh, discussed uh, the main uh, source of income under the inland act uh, so many sources under section 3 uh, uh, source, source have been defined income from trade income from employment income from rent properties royalty dividend interest etc now today we are going to learn how to compute the external income of an individual for the purpose of taxation when we, when we compute the tax tax amount of tax of an individual there are three steps that we have to follow one is the first step is compute the statutory income second step is compute the assable income third step is compute the taxable income and apply the tax rates and accordingly amount tax is computed right the now we learn we are going to learn how to compute the statutory income as we discussed there are so many sources of profit from trade profit from employment rate aggregate amount of all these sources of income is the we call statutory income then there are some situation like the some individual has some children their age is below 18 years still they also have some income the if the, if, some, if some individual has child is ages below 18 years then his income also aggregate is his father's income his father is not there the mother's income in some cases the the husband and wife is separated in such situation the, the child's income is aggregated with whom he is staying on that basis now first step is compute the statutory income of the individual that means the all aggregate amount of all source of income is the statutory income then when you compute the assable income there are some permissible deduction now we are going to learn what are the permissible deduction right the all the deductions are permitted to deduct if the act permit to deduct then in, in case of individual they are take borrowing loans for a business purpose and same time they borrowed loan for a construction of houses sometimes they borrowed loan for purchase of vehicles or they make purchase through the credit card they are paying interest but all, but all the loans related to the business and if the interest is paid that that is become the business expenditure and that type of interest are allowed to deduct but but housing loan interest that is not the business expenditure but still if the person has individual has borrowed a loan for a construction house that type of interest can be deducted from the statutory income but there are some other laws like consumption loan or the motor vehicle car loans that type of loans are not allowed under section 33 the the permitted deductions are very clearly defined if it has not been clearly defined such deductions are not allowed now we know that any interest not deductible for the purpose of asserting the profit from trade are allowed to deduct under six from the issued income but subject to some limitation the limitation is if any consumption loan interests are not allowed then the other one is the always businesses are not making make profit sometimes they incurring losses also that type of losses that type of losses can be carried forward and can be claimed in the next year and so on likewise if the one year the if the individual has a uh, uh, extra income and also the if there is any board board losses that losses can be 
deducted from the statutory income. Then, once the losses are also deducted from the statutory income, there are some restrictions. That is, restriction is loss deduction is is limited to 35% of the statutory income. That's so one limitation, right? Subject to that limitation, and the losses and the interest can be deducted from the statutory income. And then, when we deduct the these uh, losses and the interest from the statutory income, residue is we call assable income. Now, after computing the assable income, there are again there are permission deduction in order to compute the taxable income. All deduction from the assable income have been specified under Section 34 of the Illinois Act Number 10 of 2006. The first is the tax pay allowances of 500,000. That is depend on the uh, depend on the entitlement in, in some cases if some employ individual has employment income he is he is entitled to claim additional 250,000 also but the time to time Minister of Finance when he uh, present the budget the allowance tax pay allowances is change now up to now the tax pay allowance is 500,000 if if the next budget the Minister of Finance announced the tax free allowance for the individual is 1 million. Then 1 million is deducted as the tax free allowances. Earlier, before long, long ago, the tax free allowance for the year was 4,800, sometimes 24,000, 48,000. Like now, it has gone to increase to 500,000. In case of government servants, public sector servants, that is for a 600,000 up to 2015 and 16. Likewise, there are some, there is a allowances called tax free allowances of 500,000 for up to 15 and 16. In addition to that, other type of deductions also allow deduct on the assable income. As a building gun. those are we call qualified payments. The qualified payments have been specified under section 34. Right. Then I have in my site or I have explained all the deductions of, from the statutory income. The, in, as I explained all the only for two items of interest and the uh, losses in some in some cases there are some annuity. Annuity also if someone has paid annuity in court order that type of annuity also can be deducted from the statutory income. Then then we, we, when we learn the income of annuity we learn the characteristics of the annuity if if someone has paid annuity in other the recipients has a income now this side when we compute the uh, assable income then pay here as a payer he can deduct that type of uh, annuity payment from the salary income when we purchase a loan for a construction house then that interest also if he has paid only deductions are allowed accrued interest are not allowed these are some limitations i have clearly explained in my slide all the deduction there are some other losses called capital losses in sri lanka now no more capital gain taxation if it is so if anyone has incurred a capital loss in the previous years that type of losses are not allowed only business losses are allowed if in case of a child child has incurred losses 
if the child's income is aggregate with father's or the mother's income, that that process also can be deducted. Right? These are the primary patients. These are the deduction. Now we are going to learn comprehensively what are the qualifying payment. The each and every year, the Minister of Finance announced what are the allowable qualifying payments for a individual and also the companies. Then we have to learn that type of allowances. What are the qualifying allowances? 